All right, everybody, welcome to the call of 7.32 p.m. Eastern Time, Thursday, March 19th, 2020. Man, exciting time here these days. <laughs> We're like in the middle of that movie outbreak, and it's, I know this sounds weird, but it's exciting to me. It's the combination of outbreak and Wall Street. Yeah, man, like it's, uh, anyway. Well, so, let, me, let, anyway, me, let me get everybody yeah. up to speed on the news for the last couple of days. First yes, of all, please. This thing, it's the 19th of March, 2020. Remember these days because, you know, 50 years from now, you'll be able to tell your grandkids and uh, I lived through it. <laughs> it's uh, 4.32 p.m. Pacific, 7.32 p.m. Eastern. Uh, welcome to our Thursday, Thursday night pipeline call. Headlines for the last three days. Zillow, Redfin, and Opendoor have suspended their iBuyer, their cash buyer program. Number two, numerous uh, private lenders and hard money lenders have suspended all loan originations for the foreseeable future. It happened today. Number three, Opendoor has slashed prices on existing inventory by an average of $10,000 per door. Uh, number four, most hedge funds have stopped buying single family residences. They are just not putting them into their portfolio at all. Uh, next, Airbnb properties are suffering mass cancellations and are hemorrhaging cash. And last but not least, buyers can no longer determine accurate ARBs. How do you put an ARB on a property that could be worth 10 or 20% less in six months? So we are certainly living in, at least in the real estate world, pretty uncertain times. Um, you can't get, if you're a rehabber, good luck going and finding any money. You've either got money yourself or you are out of the game. Conversely, if you're a BRRRR, B -R 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 -R, whatever it is, buy, rent, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. If you're in that game, which, you know, there's a huge amount of single and double and triple door landlords that are all small business folks, individuals, couples, individual people. Uh, there's a ton of that stuff around the country. And, and if you're in that business, you're out of that business today, too. There's no longer a, one of those R's is gone, not available. So what are we left with? Um, well, it, it occurred to Blair and I that you're left with us. <laughs> We've got the only game <laughs> in town right now. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. But it, if you understand and you can master seller financing uh, and you can do it remotely where you don't have to go in and touch somebody else's cooties and they don't have to touch yours, you're golden. And that's the end of the show. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Game over. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So but, anyway, that's, you know, all kidding aside, this is the sweet spot. If you can understand how to put together deals uh, with no money down, without putting your credit on the line, without putting any cash into any deals, um, you will succeed in this environment. It's, it's not uh, uh, uncertainty, it's a certainty, it's just a matter of when it'll happen. You just gotta get out there and get her done. So do you see any other plays out there, Blair, besides? Yeah, you know, things? yeah, I had, I had uh, taken some notes earlier. I don't know if, uh, if everybody saw this. I was on a, a webinar earlier today that Dan Schwartz over at Investor Fuse had put together, just talking about recession proofing your business and strategies. And they had me on as the guy talking about creative financing stuff. And I just had made some notes that I, I didn't get to share them all on that webinar. I think they're really uh, pertinent and relevant here. The thing is like, you know, like we're talking about here, creative financing, seller financing, that is the key because you're not only getting that front end payday on like these tenant buyer lease options or the down payments on the seller finance deals. You're also creating cash flow, uh, which allows you to hold your properties through the downturn all the way up back on the backside to the upturn that's and jeff you and i were talking about that the other day mm -hmm. you know now you know jeff and i we're like shoot let's go buy up a hundred of these houses and just as long as we don't have to sell because it's cash flowing then the drop in the market doesn't affect you like it a drop in values really only matters is if you have to sell well that's what all these rehabbers uh, are doing out there in the burr guys when they got to refinance, which is essentially kind of like selling the property back to yourself a new loan. Um, so as long as you don't have to sell, you can really stand and make a bunch of money. Uh, the other notes I had here was, you know, you need low equity strategies. Now, right now, equity is probably pretty high overall. Just if you look at total mortgage debt versus total value of the housing 
supply and everything else. But in a downturn, that housing value goes down. So now that equity shrinks, right? So eventually, and maybe it's now, maybe it's uh, later, but eventually you will need low equity strategies and what uh, I typically refer to as equity injection strategies. And that is, again, the creative financing, the seller financing, that sort of thing. Because we can create equity out of thin air when we sell it to our buyer at a premium, higher price, higher than market value because we're providing the financing with it. So that's number one. Number two, plan on bank lending drying up. This is what Jeff was just talking about. And uh, one of the guys that was on the panel with, uh, with us earlier today on the call with Dan, uh, he has a hard money lending business. And he was talking about there's already trouble in the secondary market. Uh, if you guys don't know, like all these hard money lenders, they rely on the secondary market because they go uh, do these loans with uh, rehabbers and even the buy and hold guys now and the landlords, right? But then they're just selling those loans out to the secondary market, which is essentially Wall Street and all the big institutional money. Well, all that secondary market has now just dried up. Like after the webinar earlier today, uh, the guy texted me uh, on Messenger and he said, I think it was called Peer Street. I'm not even familiar with all the, the names yeah. of these companies. Jeff, have you heard of Peer Street? I have, yeah. So they are in that secondary market where they're buying loans, or they were, but now they just stopped buying loans altogether. That's $1.5 billion of liquidity that is no longer in the market. So it's going to put a lot of mom and pop uh, hard, money, hard money lenders out of business. Uh, the guys who were selling their loans off to get uh, cash out of their loans and go do it again. Um, so, but not only the hard money lenders, the private money lenders, but if the bank lending, like, you know, your typical traditional mortgage, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all that sort of thing, if that starts drying up, then owner occupants aren't going to be able to go, you know, get a new loan to buy the rehabber's product. They can't cash the rehabber out. Now the rehabber's stuck and he's going to go out of, go out of business. So that is point number two. And then number three, uh, ideally, and this is what creative financing and seller financing does for us. I just touched on this a second ago. You guys already know this. I'm preaching to the choir here, but we want to be unhooked from market value. And when we use seller financing and we don't have to sell it and we can provide that long-term financing, uh, like I said, we can ride that downturn all the way through to the upturn. We don't have to worry about trying to catch a, a falling knife with your bare hands. We don't care about market value because it doesn't affect us unless we have to sell, which we don't uh, because we're still cash flowing on our properties. Now, the other thing I will tell you out there is that these wholesalers, and I didn't say this on the call earlier today with the, these guys on the panel because a lot of them were big into wholesaling. I didn't want to criticize their, their business strategy, but man, you guys, the wholesalers need to have some other strategy because their job is going to eventually become nearly obsolete when the deals become so plentiful that the rehabbers who actually do stay in business, uh, they'll be able to find deals just calling up their realtor, looking on the MLS, because nobody will be wanna, uh, nobody will be wanting to get into rehabbing, and uh, all the, it'll become a buyer's market. So now the deals are plentiful. Well, what value to the transaction does a wholesaler provide? They provide the actual finding of the deal. Well, if the deals are plentiful the wholesalers are obsolete. We don't need wholesalers anymore. So that's why, I mean, I've been preaching this since 2018. I'm finally getting my day in the spotlight here. So it's kind of fun for me. Yeah. It's, um, you know, as you know, I've been in this thing for a minute and I've seen this, this happen twice before. And um, after the shock is over, all of a sudden you're going to have three to five times the number of tenant buyers out there who are willing to do deals and they'll be bidding up against each other, uh, you know, to see who can put the most down on your payment, on your house, most uh, option consideration in your house. So um, yeah. it, once again, it's a certainly it's just a matter of when, but I think it's going to turn very quickly. This whole thing, this whole contraction of the economy has happened in just days, not even weeks, just matters mm -hmm. of days. And so I think this is going to be good because I think we'll cycle through this thing eventually. Uh, when we get the economy re kickstarted and uh, it'll make it'll make a difference but in the meantime people still want to have a home and instead of buying a home they're just like you know what i'll put a deposit on a home vis-a-vis -vis an option consideration in other words i'll lease option this house from you and i'm willing to pay a little bit more because it's the, the cost is irrelevant it's what's the monthly payment and how much do i need to put it down to get into my own house and so it's 
you know, we're, we're going to come into our heyday here in terms of the kinds of numbers of deals that our clients can do. Um, and it, it literally, like you said, Blair, it's a matter of, uh, you know, at some point that the sellers will be littering the ground and it's just go pick up the ones you want, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it won't be hard to do. You won't have to spend a lot of money to get a lot of deals. Yeah. Up, so, yeah. Yeah, man. Right. I, and I know it sounds weird, but I'm actually kind of excited about this. My, I saw my mom today and she asked, are you nervous about the economy? I said, no, I'm actually excited. Like there's a lot of money to be made here. And she's like, that's weird. You know, it didn't make sense to her, but right. look, that, look, let's look at the, what do you always say? Let's look at the donut, not the hole, right? That's right. Forget <laughs> the hole. Forget the whole part of the deal. Think about, you know, there are people that are going crazy. The economy is in overdrive. If you're in the trucking industry, you're in retail stores, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, if you're in medical offices, any, anything in the medical profession where you're on the front line, I mean, you know, you've gone from 40 to 80 hours a week. So, yeah, um, yeah it's it, things are kittywampus, upside down, sideways um, all of a sudden. But it's it's going to be better for your businesses out there. I'm convinced of that. Yeah, yeah.